All right, in this tutorial, we're going to be working on uh, cleaning up some photogrammetry uh, data, but instead of um, just using it as a single item like we did before with the, uh, the bust of the character, we're actually going to do one of a building. So buildings are tricky um, to do because there's always a tree or a car or something in the way that causes um, some sort of issue with a, a, a watertight model. Um, typically the roof never works because of the black material and so you have to kind of model your own roof. So this is a building that we found on campus that was very simple, um, four-sided, small building um, that we thought we could tackle uh, within this 48 hours. So what you see right now um, just opened up. I imported into Maya and Maya is free for 30 days or if you're a student, it's uh, free for uh, up to two years. So uh, basically I just brought it in. Um, I did a right click um, and uh, hold down and go to face. And you see I just did it right there, right click and face. And uh, you can select, just do a marquee and select them and hit backspace and delete them. And basically I'm just uh, taking off all these flanges. Um, these are kind of artifacts where it's thinking it's making trees during the uh, photogrammetry process. So what we're doing is trying to make it clean, make sure it's light. Um, this could be a heavy model and you see wind road and there's other ways of even uh, getting this smaller. If you watch the other tutorial, you can decimate this or uh, dynamesh it down to a smaller size. But really quickly, I'm just trying to make it look uh, good uh, and in a fast pipeline. So if you had a hundred of these buildings and uh, there wasn't a lot of trees around, this is going to be a really good pipeline for uh, students. All right, right now what I'm doing is um, making the center pivot into the center. You saw it was off to the origin point. So now I'm just sliding it. Uh, it's upside down. Um, when you do photogrammetry and it kicks it out, uh, the origins and the axes are always uh, an issue. So just by eye, just try to get it to the origins and then try to set this up uh, in a correct uh, state. You see this is still uh, wonky and it's still hard to see. You kind of have to turn on the color um, also to see um, where it's at. So we, we're in perspective here. We just flipped it around. It was upside down. So you can see it's white. We don't have any uh, of its color attribute to it. So we have to go to attribute editor and uh, go to the very end here. And we're going to select our color. And it does have color associated. So just go to your JPEG. Um, if it's an EXR, just make sure it's uh, you can convert that EXR or TIFF into a JPEG. I usually use JPEGs. And there is our color data. So photo photogrammetry does pretty well with the UV map. It's kind of a chaotic looking. Uh, UV map if you ever look at it, um, but um, it's it's good. So what we're gonna do now is just keep con continue cleaning it up. So we're gonna use a kind of a boolean process to uh, cut off these planes so they're nice and crisp and clean. So we're gonna do it with the roof uh, and then also the bottom to cut off all the. We're gonna do cut off the planes off the roof and also on the ground so there's no uh, grass. All right, so you just want to position it. Now, this this is not a perfect uh, building. The roof is kind of sloping at different angles. Um, so we're just going to eyeball this, kind of push it down, and look around. And you may want to hit uh, four, which would go in a wireframe. Five is shaded, and then six is the color data. I'll show you the color data. So this is E. We just hit E real quick, and we're just rotating it, pulling it up. Hit E again, rotate, and when you hit E and rotate, make sure you're using those uh, radial arms on the uh, sphere there. Don't go in the center. If you go in the center, it'll rotate on all axes. So you just you want to be very uh, strategic when you're rotating. Um, sometimes from the perspective view, you can't see that it's rotating in the wrong axis. All right, so now we're going to do a boolean. You saw that I selected the object and then the... Uh, the cube, and then we went to differences and boole Boolean differences, and then you know, usually this takes about five or ten seconds, and it'll uh, strip away the data on the top. So now we have a nice clean shaven top. Um, that's a good start of our model. 
You see it's a pretty dense uh, mesh, uh, maybe a little bit too much for UC Wind Road. Um, so you could strip it, <laughs> strip it down, but um, it should be able to ha handle it in UC Wind Road, or if you're going to put it in the Unity, uh, should be able to handle that data if you just have a few of these. Now, if you had 10,000 or a thousand of these buildings, it, it would definitely slow it down, and we would take this in the next step and to uh, ZBrush and DynaMesh it like what we did with the, the bust of the character. All right, so this one's a little bit easier. It's a level, uh, so we're just going to go ahead and get Booleans, uh, difference, and again, it should take about five or six seconds. Now, you should be saving this uh, just in case it crashes. This is a very vulnerable thing uh, to be doing. It'll make it crash. Uh, so definitely get in the habit of crashing. I always tell my students to do this because it um, it, it will it is prone to crashing. All right, so I'm just going to continue, continue cleaning up. We don't want all that grass in there. Um, we could probably use the default grass or other types of way of putting uh, grass in the environment, but don't uh, model it, that's for sure. All right, I'm just going to get all the little scraps here. Again, that was right-click, uh, face, and then I'm just doing a marquee and uh, cleaning up uh, little pieces here and there. So you can see this is a pretty high polygon count, um, probably really, really heavy for uh, what we're doing. But again, if, if you Sometimes I use this process too as a proportions too if it's a complicated building. If this is a complicated building, um, I use this um, to proportion. So when I model, so really quickly, you could take this and model this uh, with a polygon really quickly. So you can you know exactly where the, the windows are and where the, the box is and so forth. All right, so what I'm gonna do, um, this is, Again, you always have issues with buildings and uh, photogrammetry. The roof never works. There's always gaps and uh, holes. So I'm not going to fill in all the holes. There's a major one on the side. I'm not going to attack that, but I'm going to attack the roof. So I'm just making a real quick roof. I know it was a flat roof. So I'm just going to flange it really quickly. Um, you can spend more time on it if you had some intricate details on the roof line, but um, I'm just really just doing this by hand really quickly. Um, all right, so I noticed that my uh, building was off, so I just spun it around. It'll make it easier for the roof. So right there, you just saw I did a, did a right click and um, hit a vertex, so I can grab this vertex. And then I did a marquee, so it grabbed the top and the bottom of the vertex on the, on the box there. All right, again, Hopefully you've done a little bit of warm up in uh, Maya. This is a, this is a difficult program to jump into, but uh, hopefully this will help you. You will definitely need a, a three mouse button for this. Um, I always use a not a wireless but a, a plug in one. And if you're using a Mac, you'll need to tell it that uh, you have your first is your left mouse button, secondary is the middle, and then uh, your third button is the right. Um, that's crucial for uh, working in Maya. One of the big things is Maya is using your alt and a space bar to get in between these quadrants that you see me jumping into. So uh, definitely um, warm up, maybe do a couple uh, modeling exercises in Maya before you jump into uh, this tutorial. But this is covering everything you need to know uh, for photogrammetry, uh, taking that data right into UC Wind Road. We're actually going to bring this into uh, an FBX, and you can also do an OBJ if you want to bake in the textures. All right, so really quickly, um, I just made a real quick roof line to cover up that hole. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't have the pictures with me, so we could actually, would have gone and did, did a little bit more detail of what kind of trim that was uh, when we go into the UV mapping in Photoshop. But I'm going to show you really quickly some uh, websites uh, that you can utilize um, uh, to get textures, so you, uh, if you do have have it missing, no one will ever know. Uh, and I cheat a lot uh, with my models, just to get some hyper realistic uh, textures on there. Um, buildings are easy to do because they're just very simple geometric uh, forms, unless you have a very organic one. So all you see that I'm doing right here is just just kind of uh, making sure there's no gaps. You can see right there, there's a little bit gap there. I'm just twisting it, um, uh, 
uh, using W to move it down and just make sure it's kind of a, a watertight uh, roof line. That's looking pretty good. So right there I just right clicked uh, ver vertex or vertices and grab them and then now I'm going to object mode. So basically all I use is face, object, and vertices and sometimes we do UV uh, um, when we're doing this. All right, and again, get into the habit every five minutes saving. Um, believe me, I've lost a lot of work in, in my day, uh, working for four or five hours and it crash, and then you uh, don't have a backup. And when I do save it, make sure you save in a sequence. So if you save uh, now, like building one, call it building one underscore one, and then two, and then three, and four every five minutes, do a numeric one, because sometimes you can corrupt the file and uh, if you don't have a backup, you can't go back to, you have, You literally have to start from scratch. All right, so um, I'm gonna do some uh, UV mapping. So I just went to face, and we're gonna do some uh, planar um, mapping on this. So I'm gonna walk this through. Now this is a, really walk, uh, watch this. So we wanna do a camera, keep an image plane ratio, make sure you have all those on there. And then um, this is a UV editor. So you go to Windows UV Editor, um, and we're going to go back here, grab the sides, go to Face, and we'll grab that. I'm grabbing all of them, but slowly we'll just select two sides and do, um, I think I try to do automatic, but I think that fails. All right, so we're going to deselect these. Okay, I'm going to go to this view, so it's straight on. And we're going to do a planar. Okay, you can see in my UV editor, which would be under Windows UV editor, I'm going to select these, right click UV, and I'm going to pull them up out of the way. Basically, we want all these UV sets to fit into squares so we can take it into Photoshop. Okay, so we're going to grab the last of the sides, shift, and we're going to do another planar uh, blast. So we're going to go win, um, planar. Right click UV, marquee that, W. Okay, so now we're gonna just again try to squeeze all that into the box. So, what we do is marquee this and uh, squeeze it down. Okay, so that was R, W, and then uh, W again, and then E to rotate, W, and then push this down. Okay, get R, squeeze this down. And I've noticed that I didn't screen capture uh, the top where you go to Windows and so forth to, to drop down menu. But hopefully you can see where that is. All right, real quick, that was a website that's called CG Textures. Definitely go to that website. It's really, really awesome. Um, they give you a free 30-day uh, trial or I think it's megabytes, uh, how many you can download in a year. But it's a great resource. I even had students pay for the service because they've got really great, one of the best textures out there. Um, so definitely uh, utilize that. All right, so now we're going to do the bottom and we're just going to put some concrete texture on there. Um, and so what we're going to do is save these out. So we're going to do go to desktop building. I'm going to go ahead and call this bottom uh, for the concrete. Now you could go up to 1400 by 14, I just did uh, 1200. Make sure that's a JPEG and then I did OK and then uh, basically it kicks it out um, to an image. So this is the other UV. Browse and put it in my subfolder. Um, so this is the top or the, the roof. Okay, 1200 by 1200. Make sure it's a JPEG and I hit OK. So um, I went ahead and downloaded from the CG Textures a rooftop, and this is a, 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 a rooftop to a flat roof. Usually it's tar paper, uh, has a certain look. So uh, um, that's uh, what I did. So now I'm opening up the UV, UVs that I made from Maya. So we're going to go to Building 1 and we're going to open them up.
I'm going to open it up both these. Okay, and basically what this is is a is a template to where the texture is going to sit. All right, so um, we know that's the roof line, and so I'm just stretching it out. And this is in Photoshop, so you can use other softwares uh, um, that are free that are like Photoshop. But uh, if you're going to do this professionally, Photoshop is a wonderful tool. So I just did a Command T, and then that stretched out uh, that layer. So you can crop it, move it out, and then hit Enter. Um, so I wanted something that aged, and that kind of aged look for the side of the siding of the roof. So I just did a marquee there. I hit a Command C, and uh, now I'm going to hit Command B, paste it, and then Apple T or Command-T or Control-T if you're on a PC. And you can hold Shift, squeeze this down, and hold Shift to keep it constrained if you want. And then I just hit Enter, and stretch it out, hit Enter. And then I get to my Move tool there, and then hit Alt and Shift, and hit Enter, and then I'll do it again, Alt and Shift. All right, and then I hit Command-E, and, and what that does is merge down uh, so you have all these layers uh, merged down. So if you have these multiple layers, you can hit Command-E, and that, that'll merge it down. All right, you can do it however you want to do it. Uh, these are just really quick uh, tips uh, on my end on how to get this uh, data together. All right, so we're going to make a copy. We have the original uh, template if we need to go back. And uh, you can save it as a PSD if you want to go back and adjust it. But I'm just kicking it out to a JPEG. We know it's 1200 by 1200, which is pretty light. Um, but for UC Wind Road, you may have to get it a little bit lighter. I'm not sure, but for Unity or any other game engine like Unity or Unreal, it's pretty good. But uh, UC Wind Road, uh, I think it has an automatic um, system to, to downgrade. All right, or decimate it down. All right, so now what we're going to do is go ahead and uh, Crop this up so some of the stuff I'm using for uh, the sidewalk, and I got a little bit confused because I didn't know where the sidewalk was. So I'm just going to size it down. The upper two boxes is actually um, the surface, so and then the, the ones on where I'm putting it right now are not uh, not the side. So I, I've kind of screwed up. But this is this is part of UV mapping, trying to figure out what's what. All right, so I'm just stretching out so that it has, has a side look to the sidewalk where it's kind of aging when the rain hits and there's mold and so forth. But you'll see as soon as I put this into Maya that it's wrong. But in Maya, we can uh, adjust it real quick. All right, so we're going to do a save as. Again, you can save it as a Photoshop file if you need to go back and adjust it, which I would highly suggest doing. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and save it as a JPEG so it can get right into Maya and work uh, correctly So when we do our compressions. All right, so hit OK. Let's go back into Maya and then slap these textures onto the surface. Okay, so there's our UVs. We can close that. Uh, again, if, if I'm going up off the screen and can't see what I'm doing, um, there are uh, drop down menus up there, just kind of drop down in that area. All right, so what we're doing is just grab that texture and go into desktop. buildings and then these are my final UVs and we hit the roof the copy one all right so we're gonna swing around the roof is sitting on there pretty good kind of an aging side look again we have those holes there it's fine uh, you could just do a simple polygon plane and put on a texture uh, that we took from the model all right so we're going to sign another new material um, I always do a Lambert. It's kind of a uh, not shiny. It's a nice uh, default material for buildings. All right, so I'm gonna put on the concrete. All right, you see right off the bat that I put the wrong concrete in the wrong spots. All right, so we're gonna go to uh, probably Window uh, UV Editor. Um, go to Windows again. You don't see the drop down, but just kind of go in that area. You'll see the drop down. All right, so we're going to switch this up. This is a good thing about the UV editor. You can take these and move them around. So I just uh, right-click UV. I'm going to move these over to the side. Or maybe just, just stretch these up. doesn't really matter. Um, 
you can move those around and uh, make it proportionate. Again, this is just a really quick tutorial on how to do this. You probably want to spend a little bit more time on refining uh, what that concrete is maybe out of proportion. All right, so now we're at the very end, and we're going to delete the history to make it light. Uh, believe it or not, that can save about half of your megabytes and just deleting the history. Freeze transformations also. And now we're ready to export all of that. Um, sometimes I go to uh, mesh and combine all of those, but it looks like we're just going to select them all and then export them out. All right, so we're going to do an OBJ, um, and also we can do an FBX. I think we're going to do an FBX. Okay, so something went wrong. So we're going to do it again. And we're going to uh, export all. And last time we did a Maya ASCII. And so we don't want that. We want an OBJ. Uh, we can do that. So it's not working. I think we need to go in and make sure that um, our FBX is selected. So we can go to modeling. Again, what I told you before, you want to go to select them and combine them. I think that was one of the issues. So when you select it, it's all one object. So di uh, don't follow what I just did before. Uh, now we're going to um, make this work. All right, so again, I'm kind of going in circles here. So I'm trying to export out, I'm trying to make it FBX, but unfortunately Maya, you always have to kind of tell it, go into plugin manager, and then open up a uh, FBX build. So you have to go into this plugin manager and uh, go into FBX. So I'm near the bottom. Uh, FBX, Maya bundle. Turn off a uh, little pane in the patootie. And then when we go to export selection, uh, the FBX export node will be turned on. Okay. One of the things uh, that are important you want to turn on, you won't see it here, but you want to make sure that you have media embedded okay what that will do is embed that texture onto that fbx so when you bring it into uc wind road it's all uh, together you don't have to go in apply the textures and all that it's all together and this works perfectly for other game engines like unity or um unreal so right there under um, embedded material media just make sure to click on embedded material all right so we just export it out um, I'm going to show you, and you always want to double check it. Make sure you save your file just in case you need to get back to it. Save it. And then I'm going to import um, our FBX and make sure it works. All right, so we're going to go and click on our building FBX. And boom, there it shows up. So it's white, and then we're going to hit 5, and then 6 will show the color. And there you know it works. So probably the next thing to test is put in a game engine or you see when road. Uh, make sure it uh, works properly. Again, this is a very, very heavy model. Uh, this may not be the best pipeline, but if you're just doing one or two buildings, I don't think it will kill UC Wind Road. But uh, if you're going to do thousands of these, I would definitely uh, uh, remodel them in Maya or 3D Studio Max. All right, thank you.